Hey everybody, and welcome to the first in a series of videos I'm calling Boot Camp Challenges. The theme today is Beatles Bass Lines, as played by Paul McCartney, of course, and arranged here for a six-string guitar. Now, both of your hands are going to benefit from today's video, and your brain just might benefit as well. In terms of your picking hand, there's going to be a lot of attention to pick direction, downs and ups. In terms of your fretting hand, all four fingers are going to get a workout, especially your ring and pinky. And I think your brain will benefit from the challenge of taking certain riffs and moving them to new places all over the fretboard. All right. Now, a PDF of this video is available at my website, www.song-bike.com. Head over there, become a member and access not only this PDF, but lots of great PDFs and great videos you can't find anywhere else. All right, let's get started. The bass line for birthday is very repetitive, which makes it perfect for today's video. Your fretting hand is going to be in fourth position, index finger playing any fourth fret notes, middle finger at the fifth fret. There are no sixth fret notes, and your pinky is going to handle the seventh fret notes. Your picking hand is going to alternate down, up, down, up, with one exception. Right at the end of the riff, right after an upstroke, there's a quiet moment and then another upstroke like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down. Now the reason why that upstroke on the seven on the fifth string is so important, because it leads you to do a downstroke on the first note of the riff. And that's where the emphasis should be because that's where the downbeat is. So all this down up stuff really matters. Okay, it's all spelled out for you on the PDF that accompanies today's lesson available for you at www.song-bike.com. Now, if you've truly mastered this riff, you should be able to drop both of your hands down one string and do what I call a parallel riff. Same riff, just a different starting point. This is what Paul McCartney does. He also does the riff beginning on the fifth fret of the fifth string. And if you can do that one, you should be able to take that one uh, based on the fifth string and move it up to seven on the fifth string. Because that's what he does. And simply the ability to take a riff and move it anywhere on the guitar is a really valuable skill. The bass line for Carry That Weight has some great challenges. I'm going to divide up the riff here into two halves, the C half of the riff and the G half. So the C half starts off with a pinky on the third string, fifth fret, that's the note C. And then Paul McCartney immediately jumps an octave to a lower C, fifth string, third fret with your index finger. It's a nice little challenge for your, your pick because you've got to skip over a string, right? String skipping. Now index finger going to glide up, fifth string, fifth fret. It's going to begin what's well, going to end up being a nice hammer-on. Hammer-on, seventh fret with the ring finger. Notice I only plucked once, right? I hammered down with my ring finger on seven, and then my index finger finishes the riff five on the fourth string. Here it comes slowly. By the way, that last note, I recommend doing that as an upstroke. I don't recommend it. I want you to do it. You must do it as an upstroke. And it happens a second time. Now, see where I finished up? Index finger, fourth string, fifth fret. For the second half of the riff, my pinky is going to immediately replace it. Same exact spot, my pinky is going to jump there. This is the second half of the, of the riff here. This is, we'll call this the G half because we're going to do two Gs. A high G, and then specifically middle finger, low G. Sixth string, third fret. Okay. And then here's a very important down, up, down. Okay. So let's hear the C riff twice and the G riff twice, because that's what he does. And 
and then So as you can tell, one thing that makes this challenging is the pinky is leading the way. The pinky is the very first finger to, to do anything, no matter which riff you're looking at. The C version, the C half, or the G half. So putting your pinky on the spot like that is excellent, and you should do it a lot. Okay, practice this a lot. It's going to make you a better guitar player. Uh, watch out for that upstroke on the, um, on the end of the C riff, and the down, up, down at the end of the G riff. Now this is all spelled out for you in the PDF that's available from my website www.song-bike.com Now I'm betting some of you are going to find Come Together to be one of the easier riffs in this collection, uh, partly because it's short, so you can memorize it quickly and then keep your eyes on whichever hand needs your attention more. For most of us, our fretting hand generally benefits from your attention more than your picking hand. If you had to choose, typically I think the fretting hand is the place to keep your eyes. So we're based at the 10th fret here. Index finger, 10th fret, 6th string, two times. I relax my muscles a tiny bit after each pluck to get that nice staccato controlled sound. Drop down to the 5th string 10th fret for a hammer on. You can see I plucked it once, my ring finger hammered down on 12 on the 5th string. Now here's a bit of string skipping. Both hands are going to focus on the 3rd string. You can give that note a little vibrato if you have time, if you want to. Just wiggle it a little bit, and then the whole thing comes to an end. Four on the oh, sorry, twelve on the fourth string, and I'm giving that a little three finger vibrato. My ring finger is playing the note. My other two fingers are there. Now I, I don't know if Paul McCartney is doing that, but you should give it a try. And believe it or not, for once, I'm going to say all downstrokes, all downstrokes with your picking hand. We're back in fourth position for Do You Want to Know a Secret? That means index at four. Middle at 5, ring at 6, pinky at 7. We're going to lead off with a pinky with a downstroke, down. And then again with an upstroke, same note. Up, down, down, down. Nice little chromatic run, 6, 5, 4, chromatic sound. And up on that same 4, down on the next 4 on the 3rd string. And then up, down, up. 7, 6, 4 on the 4th string. I'll walk you through it slowly. Down, up, down, down, down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, aside from the challenges of using all four of your fingers, aside from the challenges of the downs and ups, uh, I'm going to challenge you to make what they call a partial bar with your index finger at the 4th fret, uh, you're going to be putting all your pressure really on the 3rd and 4th strings, the G and D strings, but of course you can't help but to touch the two treble strings. See if you can keep that bar in place. Now this is going to be a little bit easier for you electric guitar players, but see if you can keep that finger in place the whole time. Because it does save you you know, time and trouble in the long run if you can do that. Drive My Car is a great riff, but it has its own challenges. For one thing, it's a relatively fast tune. 
Another thing is your index finger is going to be required to make a pretty decent jump from the fifth string fifth fret quickly over to the third fret on the sixth string. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, so here's the riff. First half, I'm going to call this the D riff, the D half of the riff, because it starts and it's going to end in the same note, the D note, uh, fifth string, fifth fret. Index finger with a downstroke. Now the ring finger is going to silently jump up to the fifth string, ninth fret, downstroke, index, seven on the fourth string, upstroke, back to that ring finger on the fifth string with a downstroke and a slide back two frets to seven. And we're going to end up with an upstroke back where we started. Five on the fifth string, the note D. Slow motion, down, down, up, down, up. Now without talking. Now here's the jump I mentioned before. You're going to have to quickly move from five on the fifth string with the index to three on the sixth string with the index. And there's no shortcut, you just have to do it confidently. Same riff, just two frets back and one fret, uh, string over. I'll walk you through it, but I think you get the idea. I call it a parallel riff. It's the same as the first one. So we had down, on three in the sixth string, downstroke, ring finger, seven on the sixth string, down, index finger, five in the fifth string, up, back to sixth string, seventh fret, ring finger, downstroke, and a slide, and an upstroke where we started. Okay, same riff as the D riff. We're calling it the G riff because that's the note G right there on the sixth string. Okay, so we have the D riff and a quick, confident, hopefully confident, jump over to the 6th string 3rd fret. Now, you want to know the secret? I will tell you the secret. And I learned this uh, very quickly, or I should say once I thought of it, I made it a plan for lots of stuff I do on the guitar. As I'm finishing the first half of the riff, right about here, my eyes are already focusing on where I need to go. And I promise you, if your eyes are one step ahead of your fingers, you will always nail that first note of the G riff. Always. Your fingers will go wherever your eyes are. If you wait too long to think about what the next step is, you'll either miss the third fret, something will go wrong, or you just won't get there in time, right? Music happens in real time, right? <laughs> so, I'm already looking at the sixth string, and same thing this time, before I even play that last note right here, I'm already looking at the 5th string, 5th fret. And that's how I can get there in time. Okay, a little bit of wisdom from me to you. line for everybody's got something to hide is relatively easy. Your right hand, nothing but steady alternate picking. Down, up, down, up, no exceptions. Left hand, you're staying in, guess what, fourth position again. That means the index is going to be playing the fours, middle on the fives, ring on the sixes, pinky on the sevens. Uh, I'll walk you through it nice and slowly. Here we go. Seven, pinky on the seventh fret, fifth string. Down, up, workout for both of your hands. Easy to memorize. I highly recommend memorizing any riff, but definitely this one. In fact, the only bummer about this bass line is no matter how good you get at it, your friends and family might not recognize the song that it comes from. Uh, for the record, the bass line begins right when the vocal enters on this tune, right when you hear, come on, come on, that's when the bass line starts. <laughs> Hey Bulldog riff is absolutely one of my favorite Beatles riffs. 
I'm guessing it began as a piano riff because it's so easy to do with just two fingers on the piano and a lot harder on the guitar and bass guitar. We're going to be in seventh position here, so get your index hovering around the seventh fret. There are no eighth fret notes. The ring finger is going to be in charge of the nines, pinky in charge of the tens and the elevens. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it here and I'm going to bring your attention to a little bar that I'm going to do at a certain point with my ring finger on the ninth fret and also some up down picking that's going to be important. Okay, so here we go. Ninth fret, fourth string. Seventh fret, third string, index finger, no big deal so far. Now, I'm going to make a little partial bar. Ninth fret, my pressure is mostly on the third and fourth strings, but of course I'm slightly touching the first two strings. That doesn't matter. Okay, and up down on the fourth and third strings. If I start from the beginning, I'm going to play the first five notes, including that up down. Hear that? The reason why it's an up down, I want that second note, the down stroke, to be louder than the first note. So, up down, and I'm going to repeat that with an up on the same nine on the fourth string and ten. See my pinky? Ten on the third string. And then one last up eleven on the third string. So this is the first half of Hey Bulldog. Slowly. It's important for that last one to be an upstroke. Second half starts off the same. Up on the 9, but down on 11. Up on the 9, same 9 on the 4th string. Down on the 10 on the 3rd string. And an up on the 9 on the 3rd string. So here's the second half slowly. From the beginning, nice and slowly. As you can tell, this is a fast bass line. We have alternate picking that never varies with your picking hand. We have a riff that uses all four of your fingers in one position and requires you to make one of those fast jumps to a totally different position and repeat the exact same riff. Okay, when I say the same riff, I call these parallel. Of course, you're at different frets, but your fingers move in the same sequence. Okay, so let's take the first half. I'm gonna call this the E part of the riff because that's the E seventh fret, fifth string, middle finger. Now, one of the keys to success here is once you get started, you might want to leave the index finger on its note, which happens to be, in this case, six on the fourth string. Watch this. Not only does it sort of anchor my hand in a good way, but I'm going to need that six, uh, and so why not just keep it once I put it down? You don't have to have it down in the beginning. I'll leave that up to you. But once you use it, it's nice to keep it there. If it's hard to keep that index finger down while you're reaching up to nine with the pinky, number one, just practice more. But number two, check out my thumb pointing straight up towards the ceiling. I couldn't get that ninth fret with my pinky if my thumb was, say, parallel to the fret or reaching way around the neck like this, okay? My thumb is basically in the center of the curve of the neck, pointing straight up towards the ceiling. My thumb is uh, basically at the sixth fret. And it's pointing, like I said, straight up to the ceiling. Okay. The exact same riff is going to happen now for the second half. I'm going to call this the A riff. Because the middle finger is going to be on the note A, 6th string, 5th fret. Okay, if you know this riff well in this E position, you shouldn't need much practice to play it down here, the second half, in what I'm calling the A part of the riff, the 
fifth fret on the sixth string, okay? But you may need practice doing that quick jump, okay? As I'm playing this last note, my eyes are already focusing on the destination, fifth fret of the sixth string and it has to be your middle finger jumping there. There's no shortcut. Your middle finger just has to move fast. Okay? Your eye should always be one step ahead of your fingers. The bass line for Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is one of the most fun of all the bass lines in this collection. It's not that hard, it's easy to memorize, it's not that fast, and it just sounds great. It starts right on the chorus, right on Lucy in the Sky. We've got some down up picking to start off. Uh, I'm in second position, index at two, middle at three. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. The second half on the open D string has a nice little rhythm to it, nothing too tricky. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Put it all together. line for obla di obla da is another fun one not too challenging but your ring finger is going to get a slide workout which is really important you're going to be doing a lot of sliding with your ring finger as a guitar player in general and you want to get past the early stage where your ring finger can feel really wobbly this is a great chance to do that so uh, we have the same riff done multiple ways by Paul McCartney first of all index finger fifth string first fret with a downstroke we have a quick slide with a ring finger up to five on the same string. Now, the PDF doesn't indicate where to begin the slide. Why not? Because anytime a slide is fast, it doesn't matter where you begin the slide. Realistically, though, your ring finger is right around the third fret. So I'm going to begin my slide on the third fret and quickly go up to the fifth fret with a downstroke. Lastly, upstroke on the fourth string, third fret index finger. You put it all together like this. Okay. Now Paul McCartney does the same thing next on the 6th string 1st fret. And again I call that a parallel riff. Same exact thing, just a new starting spot. Now even though this next one is not uh, written out in the PDF, you should be able to do it no problem. Paul McCartney also does it beginning on the 4th string 1st fret. Your ability to take a riff and move it to different places is really important. So let's use this one as an opportunity to do that. You should be able to play it the way it's spelled out in the PDF, like this. But you should be able to do it any place on the guitar with the same basic sound. Or It's an important skill to have. Learn something and then to be able to play it anywhere on the neck is going to be a really valuable tool in your toolbox. Okay, now the rest is up to you. It takes a lot of discipline to play slowly, accurately. You got to pay attention to pick direction. You got to pay attention to which finger you're using on your left hand. Don't let the ring finger do the pinky's job. Don't let the index finger creep up and do everybody's job. It takes a lot of discipline, like I said. Okay, don't forget the PDF that accompanies today's lesson is available at www.song-bike.com. And hey, one more thing I want to talk to you about. I've started doing a YouTube live stream Saturdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Okay, right here at my YouTube channel channel. A little question and answer get together for an hour or two. Okay, you can text in your questions and I'll do my best 
to respond to as many as possible. Okay, so Saturdays, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, I hope you can join us for that YouTube live stream right here at my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.